Everybody's favorite headphone just got a little bit better. Let's check it out. Hey, I'm DMS, you're watching The Headphone Show, and today I'm talking about ZMF's new pads for the HD650, 606XX, 58X, 660S, everything in that line that they could possibly fit on. Now, I primarily tested this on the HD650 and the HD6XX, which, well, they're basically the same headphone. Not to be confused with the HD600, but it's pretty much like these two with a little bit more treble. We're gonna be doing a mix of objective and subjective, so let's talk about the subjective first, and then we're going to talk about measurements. If you're not familiar with the stock pads on these headphones, well, how'd you land on this video? That's interesting. The stock pads of the HG600, 650, 6XX, and so on is a soft velour pad. It wears in very, very quickly. It has to be replaced almost every year, if not every two years at the maximum. The more that pad wears out, the less bass and trouble you'll have. It's just how it is. Great sounding pad, but it wears out quick. Good old Zach from ZMF has made something here that will hopefully last longer, but still retain its sonic qualities. Given his ability to make other great pads for his own headphones, well, I have a moderate amount of faith that these will do pretty well. There are three different types of pads he's made for this line. A suede pad, a lambskin pad, and then a lambskin perforated pad. Now, I'll just go on and say it up front, my favorite one is the suede pad, and my least favorite is the lambskin pad. All of these pads do a pretty good job of retaining the sonic traits I like about the HD6XX. Namely, it's vocal intimacy and it's timbre. The suede is definitely the closest pad to the stock sound. There are some minor differences, but for the most part, it just reminds me of the stock pad when it's brand new, not worn in yet. The treble is still pretty crisp. There's a little bit of a recessive ear gain in the lower treble, slightly more so than the stock pads. And if anything, I think it just sounds pretty neutral, if not slightly warmer than the stock pads when they're brand new. Now, granted, that sound when they're brand new only lasts a few weeks before they start to roll off on both ends with the stock pads. I have been able to maintain that sound on these for a little over a month, so hopefully that will continue, but so far that seems pretty good for retaining its sonic qualities. I do get a little bit more sound stage, however, out of the suede pads than I do out of the stock pads, which I think would be very interesting with things like the HD660S that already have more sound stage than the 600 and 650. I think the addition of these suede pads on the 660S would give you a pretty decent stage. The same can be said for the lambskin perforated pads, which basically is like, I like the stock sound, I also like the 660S, and I want a little bit more bass. That's pretty much the lambskin perforated pads. And they do just that. I've swapped them on and it's been plenty fun for things like playing games, watching movies, or listening to music that has a little bit more dependency on bass. Oh, with tube amps, I do think I still prefer either the suede or the stock pads. And then there's the solid lambskin pads. Well, someone will probably like these, but it is just way too much bass for my personal taste. It does get a bit bloated. The 6XX's driver, I don't think was really meant to handle bass quite like that, so it just kind of sounds a little bit tubby in my opinion. But someone out there will probably prefer that. But to me, it just gets too much into the lower mid-range. If it was strictly sub-bass, sure, but it just gets too low into the mid-range for me to enjoy it. So, mmm, the lambskin pad's not really my thing. Comfort-wise, they're all pretty similar. The suede pads do breathe the best, the solid lambskin pads do trap in the most heat, and the perforated lambskin sit right in the middle, but all things considered, none of them breathes quite as well as the stock pad, but then again, the stock pad is just straight up below, whereas all of these are going to be more sealed up than the stock pad is. I'm not sitting there boiling and they're not uncomfortable by any means, but they definitely do generate a little bit more heat than the stock pads. Well, not generate, trap in. Something interesting to notice actually that these stitch lines are on the back side of the pads. A really welcome improvement on these though is that they are slightly angled, giving the driver a little bit of angle on my head, which has changed imaging a little bit, but also the inner diameter. These are plenty deep, they're plenty wide, my ears don't feel cramped inside the pad. It actually feels like there's space. My ears aren't touching anything. That's nice. The downside of the stock pads is that after a while, once they start to get really flat, the headphone does kind of sit flat on your head and squishes your ears. My pads haven't gotten to that point yet, but I also replaced them about two months ago. 
The change in imaging is interesting. I actually feel like it is slightly improved on the ZMF pads. Now, 6XX isn't known for insane imaging. It's known for very three blob imaging like left, right, and center. Uh, and this doesn't just like night and day that into being perfect. I feel instead as though this takes it and just slightly improves it. So instead of three blob, it's more like five blob. One, two, three, four, five. Of course, playing games, I can still hear when things are coming from behind me, which is nice. You could still do that on the original 6XX, but for music, it is more like a five blob than a three blob. Not super crazy sharp imaging, but definitely slightly improved over the stock pads. Now, while there's a lot of positives in this state, I do find these pads to be a bit more stiff than the stock ones. And as a result, I tend to notice the clamp on this headphone a little bit more. Now, I don't know if that's going to change over time as they wear in more. I hope it does because that does make them oh so slightly less comfortable than the stock pads for me. But they've already improved some since I've got them, so we'll see where it's at after a couple months. Leave a comment down below if you want me to do an update once these pads are worn in. Now let's talk about measurements. What you're looking at now is a compensated measurement of the stock pads. Look at that little squiggly line. Wow. Let's start off with lambskin. Okay. That's a lot of bass. You see what I'm talking about there where most of that bass bump is in the low mid range and that is not really what I want. Now with EQ, you can pull down that region from 200 Hertz up to about 600 Hertz. And that does drastically improve this pad for me, but I really don't like using EQ. If this bass bump had been shifted into a lower frequency band, say if the boost had started around 300 Hertz instead of around 600 Hertz, I think it would have been a lot better. But this one is not the pad for me unless you are really, really a bass head and like warmth. Let's talk about the perforated pad. The perforated pad is pretty close to stock. We get a couple small recesses, the upper treble dips in a bit more, but you'll also notice that we get a little bit better bass and that's pretty much exactly how it sounds. It's like the stock pad with a little bit less treble and a little bit more bass. Hard to complain about that. My favorite one here is this. This is the suede pad. Out of the set, it is the closest to the stock sound. The bass lines up close enough that differences could basically be accommodated for with variations in seal. We get a little bit more of the mid-range, especially around the 500 hertz region. It recesses in around 2K, which is probably why we get a sense of wider sound stage than the stock pads, but we still get the same treble around 3.5K and around 6K. Pretty much across this board, this means that you will hear the bass more. And if you're the kind of person who thinks that the HD6XX needs a little bit more bass, well, that's a solution that doesn't require EQ. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. It's always been said that you can't pad swap the HT650, 600, or 6XX without ruining the sound. But that, it seems, is no longer the case. Zach, you at ZMF have done a great job of making a pad that actually retains the sonic features we all love about the HD6XX, and I, for one, am impressed. So with that said, these absolutely get my seal of approval, and I'm going to keep using them. I think that is going to wrap up today's video. Guys, let me know what you thought about this in the comments down below. But as always, if you like this video, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can on the forums. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this. Till the next one. Peace.